Hi everyone, I'm Dean Atali, or um, a lot of you might just know me as the shiny guy. I came up with this idea about an hour ago that I would go through um, an exact process of how I debug um, an issue or a bug. And I'm going to show you in real time how I go about this. Now, the reason for this is that I myself, I have a lot of R packages and I have a lot of clients. So I get a lot of different bug reports opened that I'm asked to look at. So I have a lot of experience, you know, debugging. And I think it's a very, very important skill. So I decided that there's a bug that someone just opened yesterday. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to debug it. Hopefully it will get resolved. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to keep doing this. Um, maybe I'll call it like debugging with Dean. But anyway, let's go through this bug report. I'll show you what it is. So I have a package called uh, TimeViz. It's a, it's a shiny package. It shows a timeline in shiny apps. And I got this um, bug report opened yesterday telling me that when he uses, when this guy uses um, specific data, he only sees the minimal timeline uh, and not actually his data. So just to show you what that bug means, if I call timeviz with, um, with no parameters, then you just get like this little simple timeline. But if you call timeviz with some with some data, then you know you get some some data here in the in the timeline. So this guy is saying that he's calling it with with data, but he's not seeing anything. So I was reading through this report yesterday, and it's it's pretty it's a pretty good bug report because he actually gave me his his session information, which shows all the packages that he has, and he tried to show me the data that he was using. But so so what I did is I tried to to actually replicate this data. So I actually went into my R session and I tried typing out um, a data frame that would look kind of like what he gave me. But I wasn't able to replicate the bug. So so the first step whenever you get a bug report is trying to replicate the bug. And the best way to do that is if the bug report itself gives you a code chunk that you can just copy and paste into your own R Studio session and run it. In this case, I don't have exact code that I could run, but he did give me this, this data frame, this um, summary of a data frame or the structure of a data frame. So that's the second best thing to do. So yeah, as I mentioned, I was trying to replicate this data frame on my own to recreate it, but I wasn't seeing the bug. So I actually asked him if he could provide me with a full reproducible code sample, meaning give me the actual data so that I could just copy and paste so that I know that I have exactly the same data that he has. So he did reply to me um, while I was sleeping. And so he says that he gave me this data. Um, it's an Excel sheet. And then he said, okay, th this, this is a perfectly reprodu reproducible example. So all he has here is um, he gave me his data set he and he has a line to read the data. And then this line here should uh, call my time based package with this data and hopefully it will show that it's not working Now he tried uploading a screenshot it seems like it didn't quite work but that's okay um, so first thing I'm going to have to download his data okay then I'm going to go into my I'm going to copy his um, his code I'm going to go to an R studio now the first thing I do whenever I try to reproduce an issue is um, restart your R studio session to make sure there's nothing um, interfering with your there's no package attached you have, don't have any variables you don't have anything so i'm on windows so control shift f10 restarts my r session now i also i'm a bit ocd about this i like having a, a clean console so on windows again i press control l and it clears my console it just gives me a nicer cleaner working environment so now i'll put his code here so we load the read excel package we load time viz and then we want to read that file that he sent me um, because I just downloaded it. It's going to be in my downloads folder. So let's just make sure I can read that. Yes, I could read that fine. Now, 
Um, before I even try to load it, I want to just see what it looks like. Um, okay, so it does look, oh, it's a special type of data, it's an S3. Oh, maybe that's in a normal table, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I thought I was like an Amazon S3 for a second. Um, yeah, so it looks like it has an ID, a content, start, and then type. Uh, so that looks all fine. If you look at the TimeViz documentation, oops, I didn't look at the documentation. Um, you'll see the different parameters of data, and if you read it, it tells you the data is a data frame um, that has to have a start variable and a content variable. And then if you look at the data format, um, these are some other variables they can have, start, content, and what does he have again? This data frame has ID, content, start, and then type. So yeah, there can also be an ID content, start, and, and type. So he has these five variables. Okay, great. So it does look like this should work. Now let's see if it works or not. So whenever I try to replicate someone's issue, um, sometimes I sometimes it's good if I can replicate it, sometimes it's not. Um, if I can't replicate it, it means that there's an issue um, that's probably an issue because of our different environments, different packages being loaded, different versions of packages. Uh, but if I can replicate his issue, then that means that it's probably actually a bug, um, either with his data or with my package. So let's see if I replicate his issue or not. Okay. So he is correct. Um, this data set really does break TimeViz. Um, so because TimeViz is a JavaScript, has a lot of uh, JavaScript components to it. Um, first thing I'm going to do is see if there's any JavaScript errors. So to do that, I opened it in, uh, in a browser. And then I'm going to inspect the page, go to my console. OK, I do see an error here um, from viz.js. Viz is actually um, the JavaScript library that runs, um, that creates timelines not add item, item with ID 9 already exists. So that error to me, item with ID 9 already exists. Okay, that tells me that perhaps there's an ID column and it's duplicated. Um, let's see the data set. ID, uh-huh. Awesome, okay. So this, um, I, I, I think that is the problem here. So it looks like his ID column has, um, two nines. I also actually do see two tens here and two elevens. Um, so I think, I hope that if we make the ID unique, that will solve things. So ID, anything that you, anything, not just in time, is not just in shiny, generally, whenever you have an ID variable, it is usually a good idea to try to make sure it's unique. That's kind of what ID means, um, identification. Um, in Shiny, for example, inputs and outputs have an ID, and if you do have more than one input or output with the same ID, your app could work, but you could also run into weird issues. Um, so let me try to just fix this ID issue. So let's change the ID, my time ID. Let's just make it um, the row numbers, so it'll be sequential. Um, what's the function for that? Uh, Row nums, I think. Row names. Row names. Uh, row names of my times or my time. Now let's view it again. Okay, now my IDs are all unique. Now what happens if I try to run it? Okay. So yeah, so that was the issue here. So I guess that does not. So I'm not going to consider this a bug. Um, I'll tell him that the data itself was um, was invalid. Um, I guess I could also improve the documentation. What does the ID column say? It says an ID for the item. Using an ID is not required, but highly recommended. An ID is needed for removing. Blah, blah. Okay, so I might even add documentation um, to the ID saying that it needs to be unique. Um, I didn't actually know that if you don't provide unique IDs, it'll break. So that's good to know. So it's not a bug per se, but it will um, help me improve the documentation for the package. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. 
Um, maybe if there's a good demand and uh, reactions from this, I'll, I'll do some more of these um, live debugging sessions. And I think a lot of them would be a bit um, longer and harder than this one. This one went you know, nice and easy. Um, so that's it. Again, I'm Dean Natali.